It's 741 on this West Virginia morning. I'm Beth Voorhees. Just in time for Halloween, we revisit the Philippi mummies. They have been mummified since 1890. They have not fallen apart. They're exposed to air since 1890. We have them in a box with a plastic top that you can look at. They are not wrapped like Egyptian mummies. The story coming up on this West Virginia morning. First, this news. West Virginia has some of the best settings for scary stories. Dark underground coal mines, remote forests, ghost trains. On this week's episode of Inside Appalachia, in honor of Halloween, we'll be hearing some of the strangest and spookiest stories from West Virginia. We'll hear how there's often historical evidence for these stories, suggesting they might have actually happened. Take this story, for instance. We've heard about the mummies in ancient Egypt, but have you ever heard of the Philippi mummies? Alderson Broadus University student Marcus Hardinger recently visited the Barber County Historical Museum and sends us this report. <laughs> Nestled next to the railroad tracks along the Tigert Valley River in Philippi, West Virginia, stands an old train depot. Although trains occasionally rumble through the community, they haven't stopped in Philippi for some time. Repurposed as the Barber County Historical Museum, the depot exhibits treasures relating to Philippi's home of the first land battle of the Civil War. But as museum volunteer Ed Larry explains, besides the town's connection to the Civil War, one exhibit draws the public to Philippi. But on top of all that, we are noted for famous mummies. We have people from all over the world come in here. Yes, mummies. In the late 1880s, Graham Hamrick, a farmer by trade and an amateur scientist, began experimenting with the mummification process using natural materials. He started with injecting his formulas into fruits and vegetables and then moved on to small rodents. After some trial and error, Hamrick's secret mummification formula was perfected. The next challenge, however, was finding humans to test his formula. Uh, he asked the federal government for permission to have these two bodies. These are two women. One is 20, one was 40. They were at the insane asylum at Weston State Hospital. That hospital, anybody could go to. If you didn't like your wife, so you could drop your wife off or your children and drive off. Reason being that it was a state hospital, they had to take care of it. Now, not much is known concerning Hamrick's human subjects, and he originally had three mummies, including a baby. But the child's body was lost to the flood of 1985. Ed Larry reveals what is known about the two surviving mummies. Now, the one on the left is 20 years of age. She died a given birth. The one straight ahead is 40. She died of natural causes. Once he started, in the pocket of one, he found a letter that she wanted to come home. Dear brother... I take my pen in hand to write to you to inform you I am well at the present and hope these few lines find you all well. I have quit taking medicine and I feel better than when I was taken. I have been thinking of coming home for some time, but the doctor still says it's better to stay put. I think I am as well as I will ever get. I suppose my husband is at your house? If he is, can you give him the letter to read as I have never received any from him since I have been here? I will come home as soon as he comes after me and Lord being willing, I hope that will be soon. Give my love to all inquiring friends. The asylum's administrator added a note saying that Mrs. Warner is doing well. Her general health is good. Mentally, she is improving. Her brother, John Faw of Philippi, never received this letter. It is not known whether Hamrick notified the families or just proceeded with his experiments. While we are familiar with the process to use an Egyptian mummification, Hamrick kept all the subject's organs intact. This was verified by an MRI performed on each cadaver a few years ago. Larry explains Hamrick's procedure. What he did, he drilled a hole in their stomach. With the chemicals, we have three, potassium and something else, we know that that was in there. He pumped them full of fluid, turned them upside down, put them in an airtight box, and let it drain. Now, he did that three times. After six months, the third time, they came out as hard as his floor. And they have been that way since 1890. As for Hamrick's formula, it is said that a person could consume it without ill effects. And the museum does have a jar with part of the formula listed, but half of it has been ripped from the label. After the mummies toured with P.T. Barnum's Grand Traveling Museum, the Smithsonian expressed interest in acquiring the mummies from Hamrick, but they wanted the formula as well. Hamrick relented. He would not 
give the formula to anybody. If he would have given it to the Smithsonian Institute, they would be at the Smithsonian Institute. He wanted to keep the formula. Well, he died with it, so nobody has it. As for Hamrick, instructions were given for the process to be used on his own body when he died in 1899. His associates, however, were too squeamish to follow through with his wishes, and Hamrick was buried in a churchyard outside of Philippi. Although the mummies are in the possession of the city of Philippi, they are on permanent loan from the Bayer family, who requests that one dollar be charged to anyone desiring to see the mummies, with the proceeds going to scholarships at Philip Arbor High School. So what we do is we charge a dollar to see the mummies. The, the rest of the museum is free, and you can take pictures and everything, which is unique. And why they are so unique, they have been mummified since 1890. They have not fallen apart. They're exposed to air since 1890. We have them in a box with a plastic top that you can look at them. They are not wrapped like Egyptian mummies. The Barber County Historical Museum in downtown Philippi is open from May 1st to October 31st. It is only fitting that the mummies can be seen on Halloween, the final day before the museum's closure at the end of the tourist season. For Inside Appalachia, I'm Marcus Hardinger in Philippi, West Virginia. And you can listen to the rest of the special Halloween episode of Inside Appalachia this Sunday morning at 7 and again Sunday evening at 6 or by downloading the podcast at wvpublic.org or on iTunes.